All right, we're back out here in the old man cave. Come on. And uh, today I'm going to do an unboxing. Ooh, hope I ain't breaking it. Um, I ordered a tripod for my camera phone. Um, something that's going to help me out a ton in the future on filming all my stuff. My fishing trips, my DIY projects, hunting. I love it. It's going to help me out a ton. Trying to get the lighting good in here. We out here in my man cave building. And the building ain't big enough, you know what I'm saying? And uh, all it's got is one piddly light at the top and a lot of lumber overhead blocking it. So I got my lamp on, I got my other shop light on shining. So hopefully it's enough light to see what we got going on here. Anyways, uh, in this video, I'm going to go over what I bought. We're going to unbox it real quick. It ain't going to be a long one, but uh, figure heck, it's a little bit of content, right? Something I can bring to the table since I ain't fishing. I'm going to try and go fishing tomorrow. I ain't decided what I'm going to do yet. We just got a ton of rain. I've been wanting shad fish. The shad have finally, at almost April 1st, they have finally showed up enough to where you can actually go out there and catch 100 a day. And we got four inches of rain, which in turn raised the river up like 12 feet above the normal. And now it's flooded, and I'm sure all these shad we had that had stacked up moved right on upstream. So it ain't going good, folks. I've gone five times shad fishing. I caught them the first time I went, and I have not caught a single one since. And uh, unfortunately, well, fortunately for my friends, they went this week during the work week before the storm, and they absolutely took them jokers to school. Uh, one guy I know, he caught over 100. The other guy, he did real well. Everybody was catching fish. You know, they were here. Anyways, I've been having a lot of issues trying to get the right angle on these fishing trips. Trying to do something more than short videos. And I have needed this tripod. I got other tripods and I got attachments, but it just ain't working for me. So I ordered this from Best Buy. It's like a 64 or 67 inch tripod that just simply clamps onto your phone simple super simple um, I'll leave the link in the description for it um, like I said Best Buy only thing only bad thing I got to say about it is so far and I haven't even unboxed it yet is it took way too long to get here I paid for overnight shipping when I ordered it it was last this past Wednesday I think they said it would be there the next day okay it took three days so it's Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday no it was Wednesday it took like four days to get here, so that's unfortunate. I wish I'd have just took flat ground rate shipping for free instead of do all that. But it is what it is. Uh, as far as UPS, the box is pretty beat up. It's got a big old hole in it right there. Looked like maybe somebody was trying to peek up in there and see what was in it. They always do this though. Whip out my handy dandy knife. And it's not taped. It doesn't look like there's any good way to do this. So I'm just going to go right down the side. All right. We'll open it together. We'll see what it looks like. See what we got going on here. Oh, I see a box. Y'all don't worry. I promise I won't mess it up. Hopefully. Okay. Sweet. So this is pretty much what I was expecting. This is the overall look of it. If you can see that. I don't know if the lighting's good enough. The only thing about it I wasn't sure about is this small base. It's real low profile with short legs. And it looks like it might not be good for uneven terrain. It might be the old City Slicker 2000 where it's only on hard level surfaces. I'm used to big camera tripods where the legs come from way up here and you can adjust them. And this one, I'll be honest, when I was looking at it online, I was pretty sure it had adjustable legs that made it taller. What I got was one with short legs that aren't adjustable and an adjustable microscopic pole. So I'll have to work with that. Again, it is what it is. And I'm only going to say it's probably got a small base because this is a small box. But I knew it was simple. It was a simple mount that I could chunk in the kayak, throw in the back seat of the truck. You know, it was cheap. It was small. It's light. 
it's not taking up a lot of room. This is how big it is right here. So you can imagine I can throw this in a kayak. I can do whatever I want with it. Um, that being said, when I'm using it, I can probably strap it to the kayak or something if I, if I end up using that style mount on the kayak if I'm going on one of those adventures. But mostly what I want it for is to sit on the ground behind me and kind of get a nice wide angle of me, my whole setup. You can see the bend in the rod, you can see everything I'm doing, the casting, the retrieving, the net, and all that with one angle. I got GoPros. I got several GoPros. I use a lot of different cameras, but the most convenient one for me right now is my phone because I can do my editing and uploading on the phone. I don't need internet, I don't need a computer, Wi-Fi, none of that. And I got a laptop, but it's just, it's slow. I've done everything I can to speed it up, but the editing on that laptop is just impossible. All right, so that's pretty simple. Wow. Okay. Wow. This is why I'm glad I'm doing the unboxing with y'all because let me tell you, it did come with a little more than I expected. Wow. Okay, I get it now. This ain't the one I was looking at, but this is definitely the one I got. And I'm cool with it because this is actually better than the one I got. The only thing that's not better about this is that the legs on the other one were longer. Wow. So this is the Bauer Bluetooth phone tripod. And I can see how and why and everything now. So this one is actually multifunctional and probably will end up working better than the one I was going to get. Because the one I was going to get was just a simple, plain tripod with a phone holder. Because I didn't want anything crazy. Because I didn't want to have something I was going to worry about breaking. But oh well, here we go. This is it. It's compact. You can see the legs come out like that. Let me see. Still gotta figure this thing out. Oh, there we go, you just pull it. I ain't even got enough room to show y'all this whole thing, but it's freaking tall. I knew it was tall, 60 some inches. I did, I did get that part right. You just basically, the legs are like that. You just push down, boom, and they spread out. But see how small that base is? If I'm in the rocks or something at the beach fishing, or um, if I'm on the side of the road or something, you know, or in some random fishing hole where there's some lean to, there's some hill. With the traditional um, tripod, all the legs are long and adjustable. So I can put it on an incline like that, like that. I can put it on three legs on three different rocks and adjust each leg to the right length to make it perfectly straight. And then the top adjusts left, right, and up and down level and pitch. Um, so I can adjust those to any situation whatsoever. The downside is they're big, they're lonky, they're heavy. And, you know, I wanted something a little lighter, a little smaller, a little less bulky I could put in and throw in the kayak. So, this is definitely that. Alright, let me put it together. And, you know, this thing is as tall as I am. This is a six foot tripod. I'm six foot three. This thing comes up to about my eyeball. So, I can get a pretty high angle with this. I can get a good angle with it, that's for sure. If I can, if I can get, keep it from falling over, I can get a good angle on this because uh, it's nice and tall. It's a lot taller than I imagined it would be. And it does have the little toggle on the top where you can level it if it is lean and pitched or whatever. You can lean it back or whatever. All right. So this must be the part that holds on to the phone. Yep. So this is the part that holds the phone. It clips out like that. You can see them top teeth right there. Ah. Dirt, dirt, dirt. All right. So it folds up nice and compact. You can put it in your pocket. These are the teeth that hold it. It folds out like that. And then it folds out like that. This is how it screws on, that little toggle. All right. Tighten that 
little bit. That keeps it sturdy. This little knob on the side, probably can't see it, but this is what loosens up to tilt forward, back, whatever. Simple little toggle right there. All right, got that. It's fairly sturdy. Now, I gotta figure out what that is. Because I really don't know. And it's spring loaded. You pick it up, slide your phone in, and let it go, and it holds it with a spring loaded claw. I can see that spring probably wearing out over time. Still not sure what this is. Don't know. Oh, it also came with a GoPro style mount that screws on there. That's your standard GoPro mount. Came with an HDMI cable with a micro SD plug in, which I'm assuming charges this. Yep, that charges your little camera button. That just clips on the uh, leg down here. So you can do hands-free. You can take your foot. I don't know if you can hear that click. Start recording that way through Bluetooth. You can Bluetooth this to your phone. I'm sure there's an app right there. So we got the charging cable. We got a GoPro style mount the actual tripod and the phone attachment which I might use it for the GoPro as well once I get my computer software right another thing I noticed about this that was pretty unique you can slide it on back down compact like that and close the legs up by pulling up on it Once you get that going, you can just shut these little legs. And there's handles at the bottom to use it as a selfie stick. And it microscopes out to six feet. So it's a selfie stick and a damn long one at that. So that's pretty cool. You can take and stick your camera down a hole or up in a tree or a tree hole or a cave or just stick it way out from you while you're riding something or walking get a far away view be pretty neat you're driving the boat or something or somebody you're riding with somebody driving you can hold that thing out there in front get a good 360 angle I can already tell this is going to be pretty legit now would I want to trust this little old dilly dally here Probably not. My thing is, it spins, so when you hold it out, it might fling around, you know. I have screwed down this thing as tight as I can, and all it adjusts is this ball. It still spins 360. Wait, is that a lock? Okay, if you turn it, it locks. All right, maybe I will trust it. You can flip that bad boy up like that, tighten her back down, get your old selfie stick on, even up to six feet away, come on with it. It's basically a selfie stick on steroids with Bluetooth capabilities. All right, well, that's pretty much it on this. I have uh, another DIY video up, or I have a DIY video up of uh, flocking duck decoys. For whatever reason, I'm guessing it's the sounds that I used in the editing software. It got a uh, copyright strike. But these are the decoys I flocked, fully flocked, bufflehead drakes. They came out really, really freaking nice. Um, there is some black flocking on the white, but it's just loose. It's not glued to it. It just got on there while I was doing the black backs and tails and uh, heads. 
but they came out freaking amazing. You might want to check that out before it gets taken down because I'm probably going to have to delete it and redo it. And uh, I'm going to have to make a new intro because YouTube, the land of communism, is cracking down on everything. What used to never, ever get a copyright strike, all the music, or not music, but the sounds that I would use in all these uh, this software editing stuff, editing software, that stuff was not copyrighted. So, and it may not be copyrighted, but YouTube is putting copyright strikes on anybody that breathes the wrong, wrong way. You better not hum a mainstream song tune on your YouTube channel. Copyright. Anything you do, copyright, 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 copyright. Your neighbor three doors down better not have the radio on too loud and your algorithm speaker pick up the low vibrant frequencies through the airwaves that a fucking dog can't even hear. They better not even have that going on because YouTube will find it and copyright your ass. You better not even be thinking about mainstream music or anything or commercials or sounds or anything. YouTube will probably Wi-Fi to your brain and strike and copyright your video. There are some things about YouTube that I'm getting really freaking sick of and it makes it really hard for me on a daily basis to even want to make content to go on YouTube. Although... I love it so much. I'm powering through it. I'm doing it. I'm like, whatever. But some of the downsides are YouTube is censoring a lot of stuff. They're censoring a lot of speech. They're throwing out a lot of more threats here lately. Oh, you say the wrong words and we'll ban you from YouTube and delete your channel. Um, you say the wrong words and you won't ever be able to comment on YouTube videos again. You say the wrong word and we're going to cancel you. Like, I know we're in that age of cancel culture, but get up off of my nuts, YouTube. If you want to operate a platform in American soil, you better follow American rules, man. We ain't in China, son. Um, here's a blue bill that I flocked the white on. Came out sexy. I feel like I need to do some gray striping across the back because the blue bill's just not that bright, but... um. It's hard to want to do that because it did come out so sexy. That flocking clone good. You get all the shadows, the details. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. But what I'll leave y'all with is I'm going to do another DIY video on these ducks flocking. I am determined to bring y'all a video of me flocking these ducks and teaching how I did it, how easy it was, how simple it was. And how anybody at home can do it with just a few things. I'll show you the tools you need, where to find them, the links in the descriptions, all that stuff. Do it yourself. It's stupid easy. You want to go buy the best decoys on the market, the best fully flocked decoys out there, you're going to spend an arm and a leg and take out a damn loan and beg, barter, and steal to afford them unless you make really fucking good money. Most of us who out there are doing this, ain't making real good money. We're doing okay. We're giving the rest to Uncle Sam. You know what I'm saying? But uh, the most money I spent on this whole ordeal was the flocking applicator, which is this right here. And I should have done an unboxing on it, and I didn't because I'm a knucklehead. But I got this little daddy right here. It's an electrostatic flocking applicator. It plugs into the wall, and it hook clamps on your decoy and statically charges it. There's a metal rod in there that touches a metal screen and statically charges the flocking. And when you paint your decoy and clamp that tool on there, it charges it. And then you just start shaking that flocking out and it just hones right to that decoy. Stands up on end perfectly. As depicted by these gorgeous fully flocked buffle heads. The whites are white and the brights are bright, come on. And... They absorb light. I got a halogen light shining on it right now. There's zero reflection. The only thing shining is the bill, which I'm going to go back and paint it blue like it's supposed to be. But that's the only bare plastic showing, and that's the only thing shining. The rest of it absorbs that light just like a real duck. You can see there's the back. It's beautiful. No reflection at all. Perfect everything. The color scheme. I'll show you where I got the paint kits, the flocking kits, everything, and more, and how to do it step by step. It's so freaking easy, I want to slap myself for not doing this years ago. It's legit.
you get flocking kits from a damn reputable com company that has a kit for you. This is a Bluebill ring neck kit, black and white, which we all know if you get the right black and white, the black and white goes to buffle heads, it does the Bluebills, it does the ring necks, it does the whites on all your pintails. I just did that breast and butt all flocked. I'm going to reflock these sprigs. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flock these whole things. I did the heads on them. I did the white on the heads and necks, swivel heads. There's only a little bit on this one, but you can see it makes that stripe up their head pop. See that plastic's all shiny and reflective, but that white isn't. That flocking just takes that light to the head. Dude. And I'm 100% convinced that when my whole spread is flocked and it ain't reflecting light like a mirror, wary birds are going to land in it. I'm convinced. We did good this year. We shot a lot of birds. Uh, we didn't have a lot of puddlers this year here in southeastern NC, but um, we got we got into the divers right now. Nice. Sea ducks, divers, bluebills, buffalo heads. A little bit of this and that, you know. Nothing crazy, but yeah, it's been a good year. And uh, anyhow, I'll be back soon with some fishing. Hopefully tomorrow. I might go out tomorrow, man. I might go out tomorrow and do a little inshore something. Um, I'm trying to see if the drum are here yet because the river is up to like 22 feet now and I can't fish that for shad. It's just ridiculous. Um, but it's it's coming. It's coming. And trolling's coming. Atlantic Bonito season's coming. Spanish mackerel, king mackerel, cobia. Maybe some offshore fishing. Definitely a bunch of inshore fishing. Um, and then when fall rolls back around, trout, you know, and, and fly fishing in between. Drum on top water, trout on fly rod, drum on fly rod. It's, it's about to be popping off, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, I appreciate anybody and everybody who tuned in. Hook me up, give me a like and a share, or just a like and a view. That's all I ask for. That'll get it in the algorithm and get it out there. More people can enjoy it. More people can learn. Um, and then I can share this knowledge of what I'm doing with these decoys, how I'm preparing them in the off season, um, flocking them, fully flocking them, painting them. I got all the paint kits right here. I'll share with y'all where to get them, links, all that stuff, and uh, and how I do it. So, anyways, appreciate anybody and everybody who stopped by. I appreciate it a ton, more than y'all know. I'm trying to get my feet off the ground with this channel here, man, and it's a tough deal. A lot of people out there doing it these days, and uh, I'm trying to be a little bit different, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be a little bit diversified so that I can reach a better audience. Y'all have a good one, and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.